Let's try to take a unified look at uh, some of the problems we've been doing. I've got a little robot helper here made out of Legos, and it's this helper's job to pull this big heavy chain up and over the edge of this cliff here. So when the helper is, when the robot helper is first moving, that robot helper is trying to lift like 50 links of chain, right? But once the once it moves forward a little bit more, one more link of chain has made it up and over the edge. And now it doesn't have to be lifted, just has to be kind of pulled along. So the lifting gets less and less as the robot gets farther and farther along, right? By the time we're at the end here, the robot's really only lifting a little tiny bit of chain. We're going to ignore all the friction here. And just think about the gravity. So what can we say about how much total work or total energy it takes to lift this chain? As we move along, the work to move one more link of chain farther along gets less and less. So that's one interesting way of thinking about stuff. Let's take a look at another. So I've got my uh, little robot helper again here, and he, he or she has to push this block across this rough surface, but the surface changes roughness as it goes along. So however much effort it takes to push here per centimeter moved or something, it's actually quite rough is going to change once we get over here, fighting friction the whole way, but the friction is different on this material than that material. So that's another point of view. So I've got my uh, springy rubber band here. What if I kind of anchor it here and ask my robot friend to push it this way? Is the force changing as we push farther and farther, stretch that spring more? That's another point of view. I even have a spring that comes with its own force meter here. If I push on it more and more here, it's telling me exactly how much force I'm taking to push it. Now I'm trying to do these all the same direction, always moving to the right. I'm not sure that's coming through because my video might be mirrored or something. Um, so stretching a rubber band. So we had it anchored over here. and we were trying to pull it that way. Um, compressing a spring. Let's have our little robot buddy um, fighting against a spring that's going over this way and is anchored here. So here's a question. Can you draw what the force versus distance diagram would look like for each of these? So y equals force, x equals distance. So take a sketch, uh, take a sec to sketch all that. I think I'll do it on the next page here. So for the chain coming up and over the edge is the distance is the force large when you're at a distance of zero or small well when you're at a distance of zero you've got most of that chain all of that chain hanging off the edge you're having to pick up like all 50 links by the time you're over here that last link doesn't to, to go up and over the edge doesn't weigh very much um, so it's probably decreasing pretty much linearly distance and force. Um, for the second one where we had some kind of rough ground and then some really rough ground, you'd be pushing for a while and there'd be very little force on the smooth part and then it'd be kind of a larger force and then even larger force. For the um, anchored rubber band, the more you pull, the more the rubber band pulls back. So it would actually be increasing, according to Hooke's Law, it would be increasing linearly. And then for the case where we were, we had a spirally spring against a wall and we were compressing it that way, Again, the more you push, the more the spring pushes back, impeding your forward progress. So it would look something like this. So for all of these, we end up integrating 
from x equals something to x equals something, the force at location x times dx. So that's kind of the unifying theme here. And then in later calc classes, calc 3, instead of just moving in one dimension with x, you're taking the integral of force or something else as you're moving along a path, maybe in 2D or 3D. So that's extra fun.